All right, welcome back to Chaos to Clarity. Boy, do we have a lot of chaos. All right, I'm ready. Now, remember last week I took some I took some heat. Twin blizzards, you know, well, we already got our first blizzard warning. Now, it's not going to be where I thought there could be one. I mean, I, I should have gotten this. I mean, a blizzard out here, let me show you wh where I'm talking about. We have a blizzard warnings here um, across. I mean, uh, listen, it doesn't take much to get a blizzard out here. But again, there are blizzard warnings here. This is going to be a formidable snowstorm in Omaha, Des Moines, and Green Bay. You're not going to reach blizzard criteria, but you're going to get some blowing and drifting of snow. This is going to be a nasty storm in here as we get through our Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday night. So I just wanted to show that this was our first blizzard of our twin blizzards. I think the worst is yet to come with uh, this weather pattern here. I want to take you out to the satellite picture here. This, this upper low right here, this is our next system our next storm right in here, this upper level low. Now, one piece going into the Northwest, this will follow suit later Wednesday, Wednesday night, and this is what's gonna create what I think will be a blizzard um, across the Midwest. And it's, I'm just not talking in plain states, I'm talking the Midwest, including cities like St. Louis, Chicago, Green Bay. I think that's all on the table here. Now, the exact storm track is a little up in the air, but I wanna show you where this is gonna evolve as we move forward here. So uh, let me take you into here and uh, let's go. All right, I'll do this fast. No need to, uh, here it is. Here's the piece of energy. This upper low, this will be coming into the Northwest. When is this? This is tomorrow morning. Here's your initial storm. This goes by, I'm sorry, the, this is not the piece. It's this next piece. That's going to be the storm. That's the upper low in the Gulf of Alaska. But what this piece is going to do, this is going to be important because this is going to come across and this will start in, in uh, introducing some Arctic air into the Plain States behind this uh, as we get toward the latter half of the, this week. Let me show you what happens here. So this is the European. There's that piece coming across the area right in here. You see this? This is Thursday morning. Thursday morning right here. This piece goes across the area. Here comes another piece. This will bring some in Arctic air into the Plain States as we get into Thursday and Friday. And that's going to be the big difference with this storm compared to the one we're dealing with today. This is going to have Arctic air. And you can see on the surface map, I'll show it to you right here. You're going to start, look at the, look at the Arctic air coming in now across parts of the Dakotas and uh, into Nebraska. This is true Arctic air coming into Nebraska and Dakota, and it's all behind this initial piece. Now, let's go backwards. Here's this piece of energy. This is the one in the Gulf of Alaska, right here, 7 a.m. Wednesday. It is coming onshore into the Pacific Northwest. This is going to dive southeastward. Watch as we move through the rest of this week. And I'll show you the American model of well. It's very similar. So Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening, Thursday morning, this is Thursday morning. Now, what's going to happen is here's your energy. This is going to keep the storm, and this is your Arctic injection coming in. This storm's going to round the base of the trough, and then watch what happens. You see this set up a lot for snowstorms in the Midwest. Thursday evening, see, here you go. Now, think of it this way. This is the storm, and this is the Arctic air coming into that storm. And once this Arctic air... Once this gets caught up into this storm, this storm is going to bomb out Friday and Friday night across the Midwest. Let's watch the evolution of it. Friday morning, right in here. So here we go. Here comes your two pieces of energy. This brings the Arctic air. This has the storm. Let me show you the surface animation here really quick. I'm going to toggle north. And here's your surface animation. So here we are Friday morning. Upper air, Friday morning right? And here's your surface animation. So you have a 993 low right here uh, in south central parts of Missouri. Now watch what this is going to do. Arctic, here comes the Arctic air, right? Friday morning. And then watch how this storm starts to deepen as the Arctic air gets involved. Here's the upper levels. I'll show you that really quick. There it is. D this is GFS European. GFS European. They're very similar. Here comes the upper air into this. This is 1 o'clock Friday. Watch how the storm goes from 993. You see that? 993 
all of a sudden it's in the 984. Here comes the Arctic air into the storm, and here comes your snowstorm. Now, you're going to have some lighter snows across the Plain States on Thursday, but this is where the blizzard starts to evolve here in central Missouri as we get into Friday afternoon. Now, watch what happens. Here's the upper level, Friday afternoon, Friday evening. There it goes. You close off an upper low. You see that? See that closed off upper low just south of Chicago, and look where the storm is. Boom, right there, 974. Look at this. It goes... From Friday morning, 993, all the way down to 974. So that's almost 993, 983. It's not quite 24 millibars in 24 hours yet. But then look at that, 974 low, right underneath that upper low. By the way, here's the, Merrick, the GFS model. Not quite as strong because it doesn't close off the upper low yet, but it does right there at 1 a.m., Saturday morning, and then that too has a 974 low just south of Detroit. That's the American model, the European model, a little farther off to the west, let's say right over Lansing, Michigan, all right? And this is a true blizzard back in here, right in here. This is a true blizzard. Chicago, Madison, Green Bay. Look at the evolution of the surface storm here. So it starts uh, Friday, um, let's see, 997 Thursday night. Friday morning, 993. Then it goes to 984 between uh, north and west of Nashville. Then it tracks due north and goes to 974 Friday evening. And that will be just south of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Friday night, it goes down to 971 low and it's west east of Kalamazoo. That puts Chicago's in the crosshair with it. Also, I think you can get you can get a blizzard around St. Louis, most of central and northern Illinois, Madison, Green Bay with this storm. This is a nasty, nasty storm. I'll show you the blizzard area in a second, but it's all because of Arctic air coming in. And the other thing to think of here, now you're looking at temperatures probably in the 20s with AccuWeather real field temperatures. Where it's snowing, you're probably back into the 20s. I'd say if not teens, with AccuWeather real field temperatures, single numbers below zero, easily. And look at this Arctic air coming southbound. This storm is also going to cause more problems across the Northeast with another band of heavy rain. There's going to be flash flooding problems in the Northeast Tuesday night and Wednesday. This will renew that problem with more rain. Uh, with more heavy rain, probably another inch or two. In fact, I, I drew this graphic up to kind of give you an idea of the triple extremes with this. And I probably should have added a severe weather threat. Mid-South Thursday and then Friday across the Southeast and the Carolinas. There could be four threats. But this is going to renew the threat, renewed flooding threat across the Northeast. This is Mid-Atlantic and Northeast, Friday, Friday night. Here's your blizzard area that I've drawn. This is where you have a chance of being an all-out blizzard. And I'm, I don't mean blizzard conditions where people are saying, well, it's not quite. No, this would be a blizzard. Quarter mile visibility for three straight hours with wind gusts over 35 miles per hour, I believe, for three straight hours. I think that's going to be achieved in this area in here. This is going to be really bad, Friday, Friday night. And then the Arctic air comes in. Now. That then sets us up. Everybody's wondering, when's the East Coast? When's the East Coast? Well, now your turn comes after that. Let me explain how that evolves here quickly, and then we're going to leave. So let's go forward here. Surface map. Get in the Sunday morning. What's going on? You have your storm gone, but you see what's going on here? You have a frontal boundary that's stalled out in here. So you have a front that's stalled out in here. Different boundaries. I'd put the... I put the cold front probably, I think it's somewhere in, in, in here, all right? So you have a boundary stuck in here, and you have additional energy coming down the pike. Let me show that to you. See, here it comes. You see that, the energy in Arizona? Watch that. That comes across the area. Now, it's not all that strong yet, but you don't know how that's going to turn out. And watch, all of a sudden, you've got, you've got energy in the Midwest, you've got a boundary, and all of a sudden, you have a storm. This is the European model. Watch the storm. There it goes as we get into Tuesday morning, Monday night, Tuesday morning, Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday evening, right up the coast. And that shows 978 off the New England coast. 
the your, the the American model somewhat similar, showing it blows up along the the, the coast here. So. It's the East Coast turn then early next week. I already have a snow and ice map, thanks to Mr. Joe Lumberg here. This is our snow and ice map for this storm. This will be early next week. So the uh, 14th is what day? That is Sunday, all right? So this is kind of a snapshot. This will end up being Sunday, Sunday night across Texas. Then Monday into Tuesday, right up the eastern seaboard, this could be snow and ice. And it's a little early. I, I, I don't know about Washington, D.C., but I think New York City, Boston, Philadelphia, you're in the game here. You're definitely in the game. And we could be looking at a significant amount of ice across Texas. So this, too, is then going to be a nasty storm early next week. So, again, batten down the hatches. You know, we've got so much stuff going on here. I didn't even talk about today's storm. I'm talking or to, uh, Monday into Tuesday storm. These are the triple extremes for Friday, Friday night. And I put a, probably put a, a fourth extreme on here for the possibility of severe weather here. Mid-South Thursday, right? And then you've got to worry about Friday across the Southeast and the Carolinas. A renewed flood threat once again, and we have a, a life-threatening flash flooding event going on in the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast Tuesdays, Tuesday night. Well, here's another threat. Here's your blizzard area. And I'm not, I mean, I'm not talking about blizzard conditions. I'm talking about a blizzard. That's a possibility with the system that could shut down cities like Chicago. It's a possibility. Listen, if this storm comes a little farther west, then we shift it west, or farther east, we shifted east. But somewhere in here, I think we have to talk about the potential for a blizzard Friday, Friday night, and then get ready for Arctic air. By the way, the NFL wild card games are going to be impacted. Kansas City on Saturday evening, I think temperatures could be in the single numbers with AccuWeather real field temperatures below zero. I think Buffalo and Pittsburgh at one o'clock on Sunday, you could be looking at heavy lake effect snow somewhere around uh, Orchard Park. That could be a real mess. One wonders if, if, if they get the heavy bands of snow, they'll even play the game. And then Green Bay at uh, Dallas in Arlington Sunday. Yeah, I know uh, at and Stadium's a dome, but they could have ice, you know, temperatures near freezing outside the game, and you could have ice b before the game's over outside. So for people trying to get home, that could be a nightmare. What a pattern. Buckle up and stay tuned.